Let's take a look at certain types of cells. Uh, in general, we're talking about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. It's a, it's a mouthful, but uh, you can kind of get a hint here. Pro kind of uh, means before as a prefix. So these are kind of before, uh, before body you can think about. And this is more modern things. So we are more modern, so we our cells are actually eukaryotic. So what cells have been around for a very long time um, that came before our cells, that would be things like bacteria who've been around for a very, very long time. So a couple different analogies to look at. Here's something kind of silly. Jelly beans versus this is a cross section through a peanut M&M. Jelly bean, you bite it, it can't really see anything inside, just some jelly inside. Uh, this is and then uh, a peanut M&M obviously has these different layers and you've got this little centerpiece right there. So obviously cells are much more complex than this, but the idea here is that there's a center uh, that is actually containing some important stuff. Over here in the jelly bean, there's not a specific center. So that's one of the defining characteristics that separates prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells or that in general they are simpler. Um, in general, sorry, the prokaryotic cells are more simpler and the eukaryotic cells are more complex. But even though they're prokaryotic, they carry out all the functions of life, eukaryotic cells can be differentiated so that certain cells can do different types of jobs as well too. So bacteria fit into this category. That's about the only thing that fits into this category. All other types, as uh, we'll see later, um, fit into eukaryotic type, more complex. That would be plant cells, animal cells, fungi also fit here, and protists, things like amoeba. Don't confuse amoeba and other uh, amoeba and other protists with bacteria, which are much better, maybe approximately 10 times smaller, and they're much simpler in structure. Here are some pictures of some various prokaryotic cells. These are all bacteria. These are all different types of bacteria. In general, a prokaryotic cell is very small and it doesn't have a nucleus. We're going to see that in a second. It does not have a nucleus that contains the DNA in the center. E. coli is one of the most common types of bacteria. There's plenty of it in your gut right now as well, too. Um, make sure you have to be able to actually draw a generalized prokaryotic cell. So if you just think jelly beans, start with that and at least you'll get the outermost layer. So here's a simplified diagram. It's, I mean, you could draw something like this, but you don't have to worry about drawing all these extra bits, just a few bits sticking out, that's okay. But just get the main layers. You don't need any complex shading. Um, every cell has a cell membrane, which is this innermost line here. Now you have to be very specific. When you draw this and you label with lines, make sure the end of the line is touching the exact part of the structure. A little further out, and you'd be talking about the cell wall. Uh, the cell membrane we shall call the plasma membrane. As we're going to learn later, the structure of the cell membrane is a lot more complicated than a simple line, so beware of that. Outside of that is the cell wall, which is slightly thicker. Um, the cytoplasm is the jelly area that's inside, so this is pointing to the space, so it's also called the cytosol, but make a note, cytoplasm is also appropriate. Although there is no nucleus, it's like a, a nucleus is a closed compartment containing the DNA, there is DNA. And the DNA is found, it's just clumped together in a general area. Sometimes it could be further over here, sometimes further over here. But we call that the nucleoid region. Sounds like a nucleus void. Okay, there's no separate compartment for it. That's one of the key characteristics that distinguishes prokaryotic cells from eukaryotic cells, which are up next. Ribosomes, we'll talk about these later. In general, ribosomes are little protein factories. A capsule can be surrounding on the outside. This can vary depending on the type of bacteria or pro prokaryotic cell we're talking about. Pili are little, these can help with uh, movement and they can help with conjugation, with connecting with other bacteria. We won't get into that uh, right now, but they are structures that can be seen in electron micro micrograph diagrams. And finally, also helping with movement is the flagellum. Flagellum, this is more obvious, it looks like flag, and you're going to wave that flag. Uh, helps with movement, helps with movement. Okay, here are a few of the functions I've already talked about, but go ahead and take a look. 
plasma membrane, directs so what moves into and out of the cell. We're going to learn about that in more detail. Cell wall general uh, protection prevents bursting. Nucleoid region contains genetic information that directs the activities. You know that the DNA is codes for a whole bunch of stuff. Through transcription and translation, uh, it's going to produce proteins. And the ribosomes are the ones that actually produce those proteins, where proteins are produced. Make a note of this. You'll see this a little bit later. This is another thing that distinguishes prokaryotic, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells are that the ribosomes, this isn't going to make, make much sense to you right now, but the ribosomes in prokaryotic cells happen to be uh, measured by 70S units. S stands for Svedberg, a Svedberg unit. Look that up, see what, see what it's all about. It's spelled S-V-E-D-B-U-R-G. It's just a type of unit, and it's something that the IV wants you to know. Whether it's significant or not, um, that's up to you, but you have to distinguish the ribosomes in prokaryotic cells are a size of 70 Svedberg units. Oh, I skipped this down here. The cytosol, the cytoplasm, jelly-like cytoplasm that gives the shape. The capsule encloses the bacterial cell. Pili I mentioned in conjugation, it's kind of like bacterial sex, but that's going to be a little bit confusing because up until now you've learned that bacteria reproduce asexually, so why would there be any kind of sexual reproduction? Well, that'll come a little bit later. In general, bacteria reproduce asexually. The flagellum helps with movement of the bacteria. Okay. So a couple other diagrams of... Uh, prokaryotic cells here. These are electron micrographs. So zoomed in really strong, not with the light microscopes we have in the lab. These are very powerful microscopes capable of magnifying up to 10,000 times or more. Okay, we just talked about bacteria making baby. In general, asexual, we call it binary fission. Very simple. Pause, take a look at this video. Uh, take a look at this screen right here. Make sure you're understanding exactly what's going on. Uh, not too difficult here. Have some DNA, it's duplicated. This pinches. Now this is all 3D, so imagine it's like a uh, a sausage balloon being pinched down the middle and then it splits and, diver and uh, diverges into two separate pieces right there. So we call it binary fission. It's specific to the process that prokaryotic cells use to actually divide. Okay. Same type of thing. There's an image of it actually happening. Now, take a look which one's the jelly bean, right? You can see that this is clearly the jelly bean. This is clearly, well, closer to a peanut M&M. Which one's the prokaryotic cell? That's right, the one that looks like the jelly bean. So that's what's over here. You can't see all those small details, but we know that they're there, especially when we zoom in a lot closer. So this is probably a eukaryotic cell, I can assume, Maybe this general area over here could be the nucleus. That's not a very good picture, but this definitely looks more complex than this cell over here. So then we move on to eukaryotic cells. Our nerve cells, here's a nerve cell. It could be eukaryotic cells. Uh, plant cells, that's an amoeba. This is a eukaryotic cell. They all have uh, a specific nucleus that should be able to be identified. And in, in this case, you can see it very clearly. And the chromosomes are actually in here. You can actually see those chromosomes as well too. And they're packaged safely inside uh, a separate nuclear membrane, which we're going to specify a little bit here. This may be too early, but see what you know. In which organelle does the production of ATP due to chemiosmosis occur? Perhaps you can take a guess right now and then come back and take a look at this question again and see if you can figure it out. By the end, you should be able to identify that A looks like the nucleus. One of these things might be mitochondria, and one of these things, even if you're not clear, at least you can rule out that it's not. Um, ATP is a form of energy. It's made in the mitochondria. So even if you don't know this word, chemiosmosis, you will learn this later. But even if you don't know, you should be thinking ATP, where is the powerhouse? Mitochondria. So you're looking for something that looks like mitochondria. Did you get it? Too bad. Just kidding. I, I assume you got it. All right. Good job. Here's a typical eukaryotic cell. Looks much more complex, right? It looks more, almost like a brec breakfast plate. And I think you should actually try to turn this into a visual breakfast plate in your mind. Omelette. Look at these little sausages with ketchup. Pepper. 
bacon, stack of pancakes set up vertically on the plate because you're weird like that. Slice of tomato. Uh, that, I'm, it's making me hungry. But anyways, if you can identify these things, at least structurally, you should be able to draw them as well. And then there are the functions, but we'll work on the functions a little bit later. So various things around here, micro villas, let's just jump through a bunch of these. Um, the IB syllabus has specific things they want you to know. This has a few extra things in this diagram, um, but let's just uncover a few of them. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, nuclear envelope, nuclear pore, there's a lot. Nucleus, you know this already definitely. Mitochondria, we talked about, that's the powerhouse, ATP is made there. Ribosomes are very important. Ribosomes are the factories that make proteins. Actually, didn't we see those in the prokaryotic cell? There you go, there's some things that are already similar between them. Uh, starch, no, that could be a starch. This is an animal cell though. Okay, forget that, let's cross that out. Well, it could be different types of granules. I was thinking starch granule, but let's ignore that for now. Golgi apparatus with a capital G after Professor Golgi. That thing looks like a stack of pancakes. Uh, free ribosomes. This is all looking like food to me right now and a lot of brand new vocabulary words. Uh, let's slowly figure out what the functions are of some of these things. Plasma membrane. That's an example. That's horrible. That's an example of a bad way to label something. This should be stopped right here pointing at the plasma membrane. That's pointing at the cytoplasm, okay? No, 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 no. All right, here are the ones that you need to focus on. Vesicles sound like, let me get a highlighter out here. Vesicles kind of sounds like vehicles. We're gonna see vesicles moving around a lot more. Uh, that's exactly what it is. It's kind of like a vehicle. It's a little package that can carry things inside and one important thing to note is that it is membrane bound, which means, and we'll see later, the wall of this thing is made up of the same material as the cell membrane or the plasma membrane, which is really cool because it can join up and then this can actually fold. You see it happening here? It's folding and it can create a little vesicle that pinches and moves around. That's pretty neat. Uh, membrane bound sphere that can carry materials. Golgi apparatus is where proteins are packaged and secreted. Think of this as like the post office. The ribosomes produce proteins. Now this is important, free ribosomes that are kind of just floating around in the cytoplasm, they make proteins that are destined to be used inside the cell. As opposed to, oops, sorry my, uh. As opposed to ribosomes over here, it's a better picture. Ribosomes that are bound, they're stuck to this area here called the endoplasmic reticulum. Because they're stuck to it, it makes it look kind of, that's actually, this is better if it's pointed over here. It makes it look like it's rough and not, and, and bumpy. If it's rough and bumpy, that's just because it has these proteins, sorry, ribosomes attached to them. These ribosomes are also making proteins, but these proteins will be sent outside of the cell, will be delivered. And actually, wasn't there something that was like the post office? There we go, the Golgi apparatus is a place that can actually send some of those things out. All right, what else do we have here? Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, lipids, think lipids. Fats are made here, transport of substance and lipid synthesis. Fats are made there and they can be transported around. Lysosomes, very important when it comes to fighting off disease. They contain digestive enzymes for breaking down substances. We're gonna see quite a few animations showing how these things work. Mitochondria, we talked about already, ATP, and it's doing that. Uh, through cellular respiration, which you should know already using glucose and oxygen to produce ATP. Carbon dioxide is a waste product there. So we're going to put this all together in a lot more detail. There's a lot of stuff there, but make sure you understand the basics of what can be found inside a typical eukaryotic cell. And remember, uh, well, the example, this is an example of a liver cell, but a plant cell is a typical eukaryotic cell, but you want to be able to identify all these things inside. A few other pictures, electron micrographs showing these particular things. So pause, study these diagrams a little bit, then try to go back to that question and then see if you can actually answer that. Oops, here's another place to check for additional 
uh, structures and their functions. So we call those a lot of those things that we just we just listed, um, labeled. They're organelles. That sounds cute. Sounds like mini organs, and uh, that's kind of what it is. In this diagram back here, these are organs. Inside a cell, you've got all these little bits, all these little bits right here, and all these little bits are called organelles. So we've just mentioned that. One more practice question. Structure X is the Golgi apparatus. You might have to go back a little bit. Remember it, it's capitalized, named after Professor Golgi. What process occurs in this organelle? And take a look at that and see if you can figure out what's going on here. All right, should I end it? All right, pause it. Here's your answer. See you in the next one.